All right, this is section two, driving safely. This section covers vehicle inspection, basic control of your vehicle, shifting gears, seeing, communicating, space management, controlling your speed, seeing hazards, distracted driving, aggressive drivers, road rage, night driving and driver fatigue, driving in fog, winter driving, hot weather driving, railroad highway crossings, mountain driving, driving emergencies, anti-lock braking systems, skid control and recovery, accident procedures, fires, alcohol, other drugs, and driving, hazardous material rules. This section contains knowledge and safe driving information that all commercial drivers should know. You must pass the test on this information to get a CDL. This section does not have specific information on air brakes, combination vehicles, doubles, or passenger vehicles. When preparing for the vehicle inspection test, you must review the material in section 11 in addition to the information in this section. This section does have basic information on hazardous materials, hazmat, that all drivers should know. If you need a hazmat endorsement, you should study section 9. 2.1 Vehicle Inspection 2.1.1 Why Inspect Safety is the most important reason you should inspect your vehicle. Safety for yourself and for other road users. A vehicle defect found during an inspection could save your, you problems later. You could have a breakdown on the road that will cost time and dollars or even worse, a crash caused by a defect. Federal and state laws require that drivers inspect their vehicles. Federal and state inspectors also may inspect your vehicles. If they judge the vehicle to be unsafe, they will put it out of service until it is fixed. 2.1.2 Types of Vehicle Inspection Vehicle Inspection a vehicle inspection will help you find problems that could cause a crash or breakdown during a trip. For safety, you should watch, for ga watch gauges for signs of trouble, use your senses to check for problems, look, listen, smell, feel. Check critical items when you stop. Tires, wheels, and rims, brakes, lights, and reflectors brake and electrical connections to trailer, trailer coupling devices, cargo securement devices. After trip inspection and report, you should do an after trip inspection at the end of the trip day. Uh, you should do an after trip inspection at the end of the trip day or tour of duty on each vehicle you operated. It may include filling out a vehicle condition report listing any problems you find. The inspection report helps a motor carrier know when the vehicle needs repairs. Two point one point three. What to look for. Tire problems. Too much or too little air pressure. Bad wear. You need at least four thirty second inch tread depth on every major groove on front tires. You need two thirty second inch on other tires. No fabric should show through the tread or sidewall. Cuts or other damage. Tread separation. Dual tires that come in contact with each other or parts of the vehicle. Mismatch sizes. Radial and bias ply tires used together. Cut or cracked valve stems. Regrooved, recapped, or retreaded tires on the front wheels of a bus are prohibited. Wheel and rim problems. Damaged rims. Rust around wheel nuts may mean the nuts are loose. Check tightness. After a tire has been changed, stop a short while later and recheck tightness of nuts. Missing clamps, spacers, studs, or lugs means danger. 
mismatched, bent, or cracked lock rings are dangerous. Wheels or rims that have had welding repairs are not safe. Bad brake drums or shoes. Cracked drums, shoes or pads with oil, grease, or brake fluid on them. Shoes worn dangerously thin, missing or broken. Steering system defects. Missing nuts, bolts, cotter keys, or other parts. Bent, loose, or broken parts, such as steering column, uh, steering gearbox, or tie rods. If steering equipped, if power steering equipped, check hoses, pumps, and fluid level. Check for leaks. Steering wheel play of more than 10 degrees, approximately 2 inches movement at the rim of a 20 inch steering wheel can make it hard to steer. All right, uh, figure 2.1, steering system. You've got the steering wheel, uh, steering shaft, the tie rod, the power steering cylinder, the steering arm, the spindle, a steering knuckle, the drag link, the pitman arm, the gearbox, and the hydraulic fluid reservoir. Suspension system defects. The suspension system holds up the vehicle and its load. It keeps the axles in place. Therefore, broken suspension parts can be extremely dangerous. Look for spring hangers that allow movement of axle from proper position. See figure 2.2. Key suspension parts on figure 2.2. We've got the hydraulic shock absorber, leaf springs, front axle hangers, the vehicle frame. Uh, attached to the frame, you have the bearing plates and the front axle hangers. Okay, you got the spring shackle attached to the front axle hanger, it looks like. You've got the torque rod also attached to the front axle hangers. You have uh, the axle pointed out and your main springs pointed out. Okay, cracked or broken spring hangers. Missing or broken spring leads in any leaf spring. Hmm. Let me do that again. Cracked or broken spring hangers is another thing to look for. Uh, missing or broken leaves in any leaf spring. If one fourth or more are missing, it will put the vehicle out of service. But any defect could be dangerous. See figure 2.3. Okay, in uh, figure 2.3, safety defect, a uh, broken leaf and spring. Um, and that figure just points out uh, your main spring with a broken top leaf. And it points out um, the location, you know, in relation to the axle. Okay, broken leaves in a multi-leaf spring or leaves that have shifted so they might hit a tire or other part. So another thing to look for. Um, you want to check for leaking shock absorbers, torque rotter arm, U-bolts, spring hangers, or other axle positioning parts that are cracked, damaged, or missing. You want to check for your air, air suspension system that are damaged and or leaking. Um, see figure 2.4. So in uh, figure 2.4, air suspension parts, You've got your frame reinforcement uh, pointed out, your height control valve, 
uh, indicated. Upper bellows support indicated. Uh, your shock absorber and your spacer. U bolts, your bellows, lower bellows support. Axle seat, your axle, your anchor plate, clamp bolt, control arm, your eye bolt, your bracket. These are all things to look for and check. Uh, for any loose, cracked, broken, or missing frame members you want to check for. Okay. Um, exhaust system defects. A broken exhaust system can let poison, poison fumes into the cab or sleeper berth. Okay, so during your vehicle inspection, you need to look for uh, loose, broken, or missing exhaust pipes, mufflers, tail pipes, or vertical stacks. You want to check for loose, broken, or missing mounting brackets, clamps, bolts, or nuts. Exhaust system parts rubbing against fuel system parts, tires, or other moving parts of the vehicle. Exhaust system parts that are leaking. You also want to check emergency equipment. The vehicles must be equipped with emergency equipment. Look for fire extinguishers, uh, spare electrical fuses, unless equipped with circuit breakers, warning devices for parked vehicles, three reflective triangles, or at least six fuses, or three liquid burning flares. Cargo trucks. You must make sure the truck is not overloaded and the cargo is balanced and secured before each trip. If the cargo contains hazardous materials, you must inspect for proper papers and placarding. All right, 2.1.4, CDL vehicle inspection test. In order to obtain a CDL, you will re be required to pass a vehicle inspection test. You will be tested to see if you know whether your vehicle is safe to drive. You will be asked to do a vehicle inspection of your vehicle. You must point to, touch, and name the item you are inspecting and explain to the examiner what you would expect and why. The following seven-step inspection method should be useful. All right, subsection 2.1.5, seven-step inspection method. Method of inspection. You should do a vehicle inspection the same way each time so you will learn all the steps and be less likely to forget something. Approaching the vehicle. Notice general condition. Look for damage or vehicle leaning to one side. Look under the vehicle for fresh oil, coolant, grease, or fuel leaks. Check the area around the vehicle for hazards to vehicle movement, people, or other vehicles objects, low-hanging wires, limbs, etc. Your vehicle inspection guide. Step one, vehicle overview. Review the last vehicle inspection report. Drivers may have to make a vehicle inspection report in writing each day. The motor carrier must repair any items in the report that affect safety and certify on the report that repairs were made or were unnecessary. You must sign the report only if defects were noted and certified to be repaired or not needed to be repaired. Step two, check engine compartment. Check that the parking brakes are on and or wheels chopped. You may have to raise the hood, tilt the cab, secure loose things so they don't fall or break something, or open the engine compartment door. Check the following. Check the engine oil, coolant level and radiator, and condition of hoses. Power steering fluid level, hose condition, if so equipped. Windshield washer fluid level, battery fluid level, connections and tie downs, battery may be located elsewhere. Automatic transmission fluid level, 
may, re be, may require engine to be running. All right, check belts for tightness and excessive wear. Alternator, water pump, air compressor. Learn how much give the belt should have when adjusted right and check each one. Leaks in the engine compartment. Fuel, coolant, oil, power steering fluid, hydraulic fluid, battery fluid. Cracked, worn electrical wiring insulation. Lower and secure hood, cab, or engine compartment door. Step three, start engine and inspect inside the cab. Step three, start engine and inspect inside the cab. Get in and start the engine. Make sure parking brake is on. Put gear shift in neutral or park if automatic. Start engine. Listen for unusual noises. If equipped, check the anti-lock braking system, ABS indicator lights. Light on dash should come on and then turn off. If it stays on, the ABS is not working properly. For trailers only, if the yellow light on the, rear, on the left rear of the trailer stays on, the ABS is not working properly. Look at the gauges. Oil pressure should come up to normal within seconds. The oil pressure should come up to normal within seconds after the engine is started. See figure 2.5. Okay, figure 2.5 um, just shows uh, like a clip art drawing of a gauge, an analog gauge uh, labeled oil pressure. Um, your idling should indicate 5 to 20 PSI. Operating pressure should be uh, 35 to 75 PSI. Low, dropping, fluctuating, stop immediately. Uh, without oil, the engine can be destroyed rapidly. And so those are just uh, quick indicators in figure 2.5. Okay, back to the text. Air pressure. Pressure should build from 50 to 90 PSI within three minutes. Build air pressure to govern, to governor cutout usually around 120 to 140 PSI. Know your vehicle requirements. Um, each vehicle has different requirements, so know the specific one for what you're driving. All right, ammeter and or voltmeter should be in normal ranges. Coolant temperature should begin gradual rise to normal operating range. Engine oil temperature should begin gradual rise to normal operating range. Warning lights and buzzers. Oil, coolant, charging circuit warning, and anti-lock brake system lights should go out right away. Check condition of controls. Check all of the following for looseness, sticking, damage, or improper setting. Your steering wheel, your clutch, accelerator, gas pedal, fuel pedal, uh, brake controls, your foot brake, your trailer brake if the vehicle has one, your parking brake, retarder controls if the vehicle has them, transmission controls. Okay, your inner axle differential lock if the vehicle has one. Horns, uh, windshield wiper washer. I hate to, uh, to reiterate about the inner axle differential lock if your vehicle has one. Um, that's one of those things that I think it's like in the back of the, the trailer on the wheels, but you have to double check that. I know you can go to it's cdlcollege.com uh, has like a like a full pictures 
and kind of in-depth uh, walk through with uh, things to look for, but there's plenty of, plenty of helps online between YouTube and, and different websites to help people study. Okay, uh, let me get back to the list. So you should check your horn or horns. Uh, your windshield wiper and washer, make sure you know everything works properly, fluids full and all that. Check your lights, um, your headlights, uh, you know, maybe, uh, you know, if you have a partner when it comes to your turn signals and lights and stuff, four-way flashers and all that. Um, really go faster. Okay, so you want to check your lights, your headlights, your dimmer switch, your turn signal, four-way flashers, your parking clearance, identification, marker switch or switches. Okay. Um, you also want to check your mirrors and windshield. So inspect your mirrors and windshield for cracks, uh, dirt, illegal stickers or other obstructions to see clearly. Clean and adjust as necessary. Okay, uh, check your emergency equipment. Uh, check for safety equipment. Uh, spare electrical fuses unless your vehicle has a circuit breakers. Um, you know, three red reflective triangles, uh, six fuses, or three liquid burning flares. Uh, properly charged and rated fire extinguisher. Uh, I'm going to check for other optional items such as chains uh, where winter conditions require. So especially like, you know, if you uh, wind up operating, you know, in the north midwest, um, northeast, you know, places where you're gonna you're gonna wind up with, um, you know, three, four, five months of uh, snow, or you know, you're driving somewhere where, you know, you're out and around. You know, you got a lot of ice. Uh, you just have to be, you have to pay attention when it comes to that, and I would suppose that your local ordinances state laws uh, come into the you know play on that where they're allowed where they're not to okay you want to check for uh, your tire changing equipment uh, you want to have a list of emergency phone numbers uh, accident reporting kit or packet you know um, it doesn't really you know matter how that is you know could just be in a in a you know some kind of plastic um, plastic sleeve could be in a um, like a, a clipboard style um, thing mounted um, I see one location and. It was kind of like, uh, not quite like a, a first aid kit, you know, but that kind of mounting thing. And as I recall, it was on the, hmm, I think it was the side of the console, like down on the pastor side, um, underneath the glove, not really underneath the glove compartment, but um, like on the on the console, how it wraps around um, between the the glove compartment and the the steering, not quite in front of uh, the stick shift, but you know, there's different places that. Uh, whether it's the manufacturers or the company installs things like that. Um, I've ran across a few different types. 
uh, locations and some it's just you know they're all busted up where they get hit kicked and everything and so you never know where they're at but anyway so just like with a first aid kit your accident reporting kit um, it's good things to have around and know where they're at okay um, back to the topic um, check your safety belt uh, check that the safety belt is securely mounted, adjusts, latches properly, and is not ripped or frayed. Okay, step four, turn off emergency. Uh, mess that up. Okay, step four, turn off engine and check lights. Uh, so I'll recap, your step one is your vehicle overview, and your step two is your check engine compartment. Your step three is, you know, starting the engine and inspecting inside the cab, you know, getting in and starting the engine. And then, like I just noted, uh, step four was to turn off engine and check lights. Okay, now picking back up at step five, do your walk around inspection. Go to the front of the vehicle and check that low beams are on uh, and both of the four way flashers are working. And that, off, you know, off script, um, that's what I was noting earlier. But I'll make it sure, you know, if you have a helper, you know, if you're doing this in the yard uh, before hitting the road or whatever, you know, it, it really does. Um, it's always best for the driver to, to walk around and check. But if you have somebody who can get in, um, turn them on for you uh, so you can just you know walk around especially uh, depending on what kind of driving you're doing some people team drive stuff like that so it's just you know um, a pre-trip can you know could take you know 30 minutes 45 minutes um, you know depending on how thorough you go and you know I've did them uh, Obviously, you know, if, if it's a pretty good truck, you know, you're kind of used to it, you know, you can get too comfortable, but at the same time, uh, you know, you could turn a uh, pre-trip, you, know, you know, 15 minutes, you know, if, if you, you know, hit everything, you know, and just, you know, get through it, you know, uh, vehicles that we're not used to you know, that can change, um, you know, because I've done them, and I spent longer than I probably should have, just because uh, the overall condition of the vehicle really, really wasn't hitting on all gears for me. Okay, but let me back up and get back on script. Uh, so let me just go back to step five, doing the walk around inspection. All right, you want to go to the front of the vehicle and check that low beams are on and both of the four-wheel flashes are working. You want to push your dimmer switch and check that your high beams work. Um, turn off your headlights and four-way emergency flashers. Now turn on your parking, clearance, side marker, and identification lights. Turn on your right turn signal and start walk around inspection. All right, your general, uh, walk around and inspect. Um, you know that's 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 kind of like when when you first walk up. Um, there are things that you know you can like do a do a quick you know walk around. Or as you're approaching it, um, you're already doing a general uh, because you know you're going to be looking at your vehicle. Okay, uh, so clean all the lights, reflectors, and glass as you go along. Um, your left front side. Driver's door glass should be clean, 
door latches or locks should work properly. Left front wheel, condition of wheel and rim. Uh, missing, bent, broken, studs, uh, clamps, lugs, or any signs of misalignment. Your condition of tires, uh, properly inflated. Uh, valve stem and cap, okay. No serious cuts, bulges, or tread wear. Uh, use wrench to test rust, streaked lug nuts, indicating looseness. Here, a hub oil level, okay. No leaks. Okay, side note. Um, like I noted earlier, uh, like your hub oil level, um, you know, that seal. Um, you know, there's a lot of a lot of different um, inputs, um, places that the new drivers can go and people who've you know been driving for a little while uh that's pretty much all they do they just drive they don't um they don't really get into detail uh, about everything they you know take a test get your license and then you just drive and so they can't really explain a whole lot because it's, you know, they're there for paycheck and, you know, it's a common thing, no matter what type of work we do, where, you know, you're, you're there to get your paycheck, do your job, you know, it's not like you're, you know, you're put, you're not putting any effort, you're just not, you really couldn't teach anybody anything more than like the bare minimum okay so there's a lot of places uh, we can go to nowadays uh, to learn you know like how to check your hub hub oil level um, the location of different things so you know nowadays it's a lot different than it was 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years ago and stuff. Um, you can you can advance your knowledge in an area so much more exponentially than you could, you know, you can actually, except for the physical aspects of the actual, you know, putting a million miles under your belt, um, you can literally learn the guts of everything uh, online, uh, you know, in, in the sense that, I mean, you you can watch a thousand pre-trip inspections, in-trip uh, inspections. You know, it, if it crosses your mind, somewhere somebody has probably did a, even a bit basic overview of it. And if it's really interesting, then you could go in, you know, see what, what they cover, what they didn't cover, what you think they lacked or whatever. And you could actually get tips on how to create your own uh, educational uh, thing, uh, even if it's just for your own, uh, your own knowledge. Okay, so let me get back on subject. Okay, and your left front side, things to check for. You wanna, you wanna look at your left front sus suspension. Okay, the condition of the spring, your spring hangers, shackles, U-bolts. Uh, check your shock absorber condition. Your left front brake, the condition of the brake drum or disc, you know, the condition of the hoses. And the front, you want to uh, check the condition of your front axle, uh, condition of steering system. No loose, worn, bent, damaged, or missing parts. You must grab the steering mechanism to test for looseness. Uh, condition of your windshield. Uh, you want to you know, check for damage, obviously. 
Um, you want to clean it dirty. You want to check your windshield wiper arms for proper spring tension. Okay, check your wiper blade blades for damage. You know, if your rubber's like old, cracked, stiff, and all that, uh, you want to check. Uh, see if they need replaced. Uh, and you want to check their securement. You know, make sure they're they're snug. They're you know, there's no damage to the arm that the blades will come off, and you'll wind up with a uh, permanently scratched uh, windshield. Okay, check your lights and reflectors. Okay, parking clearance and identification lights. And make sure they're clean, operating, uh, and proper color, amber at front. Your reflectors, uh, clean and proper co color, amber at front. Your right front turn signal light, you want to make sure it's clean, operating, and the proper color, amber or white, on signals facing forward. So your right side. Uh, right front, check all items as done on the left front. Okay, your primary and secondary safety cab locks engaged if cab over engine design. Um, that's, you know, that one's a, definitely a good one to make sure you remember. If it was up to me, they'd get rid of the cab over design, but uh, it's just me. Right fuel tanks. Okay, you want to check and make sure that they're securely mounted, they're not damaged or leaking. Your fuel crossover line, we'll make sure that's secure. Your tank or tanks, make sure they contain enough fuel, cap or caps, on and secure. Uh, condition of visible parts, rear of engine, not leaking. Transmission, not leaking. Exhaust system, we'll make sure it's secure. So not leaking, not touching wires, fuel, or airlines. Your frame and cross members, no bends or cracks. Uh, your airlines and electrical wiring. Okay, you want to make sure they're secured against uh, snagging, rubbing, or wearing. Your spare tire carrier or rack, not damaged, if so equipped. Yeah, so pretty much um, all the stuff, you know, in a sense, you're kind of looking for the same types of things um, for each individual item. You know, no cracks, uh, you know, no no warpage, uh, anything like that. Um, you know, metal, rubber, plastic, vinyl, um, everything, everything that, that makes up any type of product. Um, any type of machinery, anything, um, they're gonna they're gonna wear. So it it really is something. There's there's obvious wear. There's there's dangerous wear, and there's wear that is, um, you know, hey, we need to we need to get this ordered. You know, the truck shop needs to order something, um, so we can get this replaced. You know, the next time I'm in, you know, there's things that are not uh, dangerous. Uh, your your vehicle's not going to fall apart, but you should you shouldn't let things add up. Um, been in plenty of you know vehicles, Mack trucks, you know, um, Volvo's and Freightliners and stuff, uh, cab overs, you know. Just different ones, um, pump trucks, dump trucks, they dump trailers. You know they they all have their issues uh, that you need to you know keep track of. Okay, all right, all right, back on script. Okay, so you want to check uh, your spare tire and or wheel. Make sure it's securely mounted and racked. Okay, the spare tire and wheel adequate, um, it's the proper size, and properly inflated. Okay, your cargo securement trucks. Um, you want to make sure your cargo is pr 
properly blocked, braced, tied, chained, etc. Header board adequate, secure if required. Sideboard, stake strong enough, free of damage, properly set in place, if so equipped. Uh, canvas or tarp, if required. So like, you know, definitely like on a flatbed or um, uh, like dump trucks, uh, trucks with sidewalls, um, not necessarily dump trucks. Uh, you know, there are trucks out there that, that are, you know, full size, but they've got, uh, they've got side rails and stuff. Uh, and, you know, they might be offloaded by hand or whatever. So, you know, you might show up and, uh, it might be a rental something that you know they're gonna they're gonna use a low lift to reach in and offload it and you know you might have loose loose uh things in there that you know you just need to have a canvas or tarp so you just always want to make sure no matter what you're driving if you have to have it tarped over that uh you know that tarp is you know, if you're not using it at the moment, you're empty or whatever, you know, it's rolled up, uh, secured, and everything. And then uh, when you do cover it, uh, cover the, the load for um, transport, you want to make sure that it's, it's properly secured. Um, because like right here where it says properly secured to prevent tearing, um, billowing or blocking of mirrors well that uh, that billowing billowing um, when you get going down the road you're creating a lot of stress on that if it's not if it's not as tight as you can reasonably get it uh, you can limit the life of that canvas or tarp really fast okay so back on script Okay, if oversized, if your load is oversized, you know, mobile home sheds, um, you know, bridge, uh, bridge components, things like that, um, you know, using the large flatbeds, whatnot, <clears throat> you know, you want to make sure that uh, you've got all required signs, you flags, lamps, and reflectors. Uh, safely and properly mounted, and all required permits and drivers in the driver's possession. Okay, so uh, curbside cargo compartment doors, uh, you want to make sure they're in good condition, uh, securely closed, and last locked, and required security seals in place. Okay, for your right rear. Condition of wheels and rims, no missing, bent, or broken spacers, studs, clamps, or lugs. Condition of tires, you want them properly inflated, valve stems and caps okay. No serious cuts, bulges, tread wear, tires not rubbing each other, and nothing stuck between them. Tires, uh, you want them the same size, um, e.g., uh, that is... Uh, not mixed radial and bias types. So you want your tires evenly matched, you know, same sizes. Uh, wheel bearings and seals not leaking. Uh, and check your sus suspension. Uh, your condition of the springs, uh, your spring hangers, your shackles and U-bolts. And make sure your axle's secure, um, powered axle not leaking lube, uh, your gear oil, uh, the condition of torque rod arms and the bushings, make sure, you know, everything's, um, you know, if it's something that has to be adjusted, it's properly adjusted and all that. Okay, your condition of shock absorbers. If retractable, axle equipped, uh, check the condition of lift mechanism. If air powered, check for leaks. Uh, condition of air ride components. 
You want to check your brakes, your brake adjustment, condition of brake drums or discs, condition of hoses. Look for anywhere due to rubbing. Your lights and reflectors. You know, make sure they're not cracked or anything. Um, they're clean and all that. So your side marker lights, you know, clean, operating, and proper color. Red at rear, others amber. Uh, your side marker reflectors, clean and proper color. Red at rear, others amber. So on your rear, your lights and reflectors, check those. Your rear clearance and identification lights, clean, operating, and proper color. Red at rear. So uh, overall, no matter where the light or the reflector is at, no matter the color, uh, they should all be clean. You know, it's doubtless uh, you could wind up with all sorts of foreign matter material caking them, uh, you know, due to weather conditions and everything. You know, but you know whether you're over the road or whatever. You know, if you pull in, if you got to pull in for lunch somewhere. Uh, you know, if you have to stop somewhere and you've been through any kind of uh, weather, it's always best to do a quick walk around. Um, you know, if you're on the clock, you know, you, you, you know, you, you got to move, um, but you got to stop, you got to take a leak, whatever. So, you know, you can take two minutes to walk around a vehicle with a rag in your hand. And, you know, do a quick brush, you know, uh, brush off of any mud or anything like that. Uh, obviously, it's easier to clean it off after it's already dried um, so it doesn't smear. Okay, back to the, back to the text. So, you want to make sure your reflectors are clean and proper color. You want them red at the rear. Um, there are times... Uh, you know, sometimes I've seen where somebody has has uh, you know changed <clears throat> changed the light out, you know, because it was busted or whatever, and you know had the wrong um, the wrong color on the outside. Uh, you know, it's, maybe it was the only thing that um, they could find at the time, or, or they might have had a spare something uh, in the cab. Uh, but it's just something that once you get back to the, uh, you know, get back to your terminal, your shop, whatever. You know, you just tell your mechanics, write your paperwork up, get that taken care of. So you have the proper colors at the proper locations. Okay, so make sure your tail lights are clean, operating in proper color, and the red at the rear. Okay, now your right rear turn signal, make sure it's operating in proper color. So, yeah. You have red, yellow, or amber at the rear. So the colors are definitely something to look at. Um, Okay, uh, I, had, I had a brain uh, brain fog there for just a moment. I don't know what I was thinking. Okay, so your license plate uh, or plates, um, if you have to have front or back. So just make sure they're present, clean and secured. Um, it's always good to... It's always good to have um, 
maybe like security screws, you know, kind of screw with the, the heads that normal people wouldn't have um, the security bits available, you know, depending on where you're at, you know, people stealing your license plates and stuff. Okay, so make sure your splash guards are present, not damaged, properly fastened, not dragging on the ground or rubbing the tires. So that's something that you can get hit for um, pretty easily. Um, I've, I've seen a lot of uh, splash guards um, being too long and, uh, you know, trucks are going in reverse and backing up over things like parking spot uh, bumpers things like that and catching it and ripping the the things off or you know backing a little bit too far uh, up and catching um, a bump or something and just enough to to cause it to catch. Uh, I'm just seeing a lot of them get get torn and just be hanging on by one or two uh, screws or bolts. Okay, uh, back to text. Uh, cargo secure. You want to make sure your cargo is secure. Uh, you want your cargo to be properly blocked, braced, tied, chained, etc. Um, you want your tailboards up and properly secured. Uh, you want your end gates free of damage, properly secured in stake sockets. You want the canvas or tarp, if required, properly secured to the to prevent tearing, billowing, or blocking of either the rear view mirrors or the rear lights. Okay, if over length or over with, make sure all signs and or additional lights slash flags are safely and properly mounted and all required permits are in the driver's possession. Okay, you want your rear doors securely closed, latched, and locked. Okay, your left side, check all items as done on right side plus batteries, if not mounted in engine compartment. Um, your battery boxes are securely mounted to the vehicle. Uh, side note, um, so like with a lot of other things, the battery boxes are something that um, I have seen uh, plenty of shady issues. Um, I've seen the battery boxes with the the diamond uh, steel mesh um, with cages uh, secured over to you know for protection and stuff like that. I've seen the solid uh, covers. Uh, I've seen both of those types um, bent busted, pressing against batteries, uh, hinges, ripped. Uh, I've seen them held on with bungee cords. You know, those are all things that um, should be taken care of. Uh, I've seen uh, battery, uh, battery shelves without covers, and the batteries, you know, have rusted um, bars. Going across them, uh, I've seen them held with tie downs, um, bungee cords. Oh, I think I even seen a chain. You know, these are kind of things that really shouldn't be allowed to to go. You know, for long. I mean, if something really happens and you have to do an emergency tie down, like you know, securing it somehow, that's one thing, but, you know, it's something that, 
you know, especially if you're over the road and you're gone for, you know, three weeks or something, and, you know, you get back to the terminal, you know you're heading back to the terminal. Um, it's definitely something that, you know, there are damages like that that once you know, you know, it's not going to stop you from operating, but you should get in touch with your terminal, your dispatcher, email, um, your your truck shop, uh, whoever it is, whatever level of um, hierarchy exists. You know, some places they don't want, you know, they don't want drivers uh, stepping out of line, so to speak. You know, you have to you have to pass things up, and then the people above pass them laterally, and then back down. Um, you know, other places you can just do it laterally. You know, call your truck shop, get hold of a dude that you know you've talked to, a woman you've talked to, whatever. And, you know, just be like, hey, I'll be back in three weeks, um, or back in two weeks, whatever. Um, this is what I got going on. Let me let me shoot you a text with a picture, um, you know, whatever, uh, email or something. And then go ahead and do your paperwork and get it filled in properly and all that. But you've already got the, the ball um, bouncing down the line, you know. Uh, you've already passed the ball. Now you've now you've just got to follow your your proper steps to make sure you know somebody's got the the PO number, you know the requisition forms filled out, the the order the order forms, whatever they've got to do. Okay, let me get back on script. Okay, so just covering you know make sure your batteries um, being secured against movement. Your batteries are not broken or liquid. Uh, leaking, um, you want the fluid in the battery or batteries at the proper level, um, except your maintenance free types. Okay, your self caps, and make sure they're present and secured tightly, except for your maintenance free type. Okay, your vents and cell caps, um, free of foreign material, except your maintenance free type. Okay. Now we're going to go to step six. Check signal lights. Get in and turn off lights. Turn off all lights. Turn on stop lights. Apply trailer handbrake or have a helper put on the brake pedal. Turn on left turn signal lights. Get out and check lights. Uh, left front turn signal light clean, operating, and proper color. You want to make sure uh, or amber or white on on your signals facing the front. Your left rear turn signal light and both stop lights, make sure they're clean, make sure they're operating, and make sure they are the proper color, red, yellow, or amber. Okay, get in your vehicle, turn off lights not needed for driving. Check for all required papers, your trip manifest, your permits, etc. Secure all loose articles in cab. They might interfere with the operation of controls or hit you in a crash. Um, side note, uh, that's a big deal right there. Um, I've been in uh, different cabs and you know it's it's something that every driver is supposed to take care of cleaning the cab making sure everything's going especially if if you're slip seating you know some places um, you know you come in off the road uh whether it's shift driving um or you're you're gone you know, you're gone for a couple days, you're gone overnight, you're gone for a week, you're gone for a month, whatever. And then when you come back, um, you know, you might have to come in, put your vehicle in the shop, but they've got a load going out, 
Um, you come back a couple days later because uh, that load's gonna gonna go out, but your vehicle's not ready, so they put you in another cab. Um, you know, and the previous driver has uh, you know left. They might have left some, you know, a couple of Coke bottles, knee-high bottles, whatever, up under the seat. Uh, you know, somewhere like that that can roll around. You don't, you don't see it because you don't look under the seat, or you know, you just jump in real quick. You know, you don't pay a whole lot of attention to the cleanliness. Um, you know, I, I've actually had. Uh, a bottle roll out, um, you know, didn't see it, you know, when I, when I looked in before I stepped up, um, but then, you know, have it roll out from under the driver's seat, and, you know, as I'm trying to come to a stop, my foot hit, you know, hit the bottle, uh, you know, and you got to kick it out of your way. So, you know, there are things that everybody's not going to be perfect 100% of the time, but if, if you go for perfection each and every time, um, even when you get, in, you get into a hurry, it'll be just such a, such a habit that, you know, you'll catch things when you're technically consciously not really looking for them. Your subconscious is already going to be you know, attacking the list, so to speak. Okay, back on, back on topic. All right, so um, you're in a vehicle. Okay, so you start your engine. Okay, now you're going to step seven. Start the engine and check. Okay, test for hydraulic leaks. If the vehicle has hydraulic brakes, pump the brake pedal three times. Then apply firm pressure to the pedal and hold for five seconds. The pedal should not move. If it does, there may be a leak or other problem. Get it fixed before driving. If the vehicle has air brakes, do the checks described in sections five and six of this manual. Okay, on the, on the step seven, you know, starting the engine and checking when it comes to doing the the air brakes uh, checks described in sections five and six, mm. I don't I don't think I'm going to insert that here. That might actually yeah. okay okay. I got a, um, I'm getting off track, rabbit trailed. Yeah, those are, those are both too long to do an insert right here. Okay, let me go back, get back to the text. All right, so next I'm gonna go down to the brake system. Still in step seven, okay. For the brake system, you want to test your parking brakes and you know, fasten your safety belt. Set your parking brake, the, the power unit only. Uh, release trailer parking brake if applicable. Place your vehicle into a low gear. And gently pull forward against the parking brake to make sure the parking brake holds. All right, so um, backing up a second. So in testing the parking brakes, um, after you fasten your safety belt, you set your parking brake for the power unit only. Um, you know, that's, that's obviously like you're pulling a trailer, flatbed, you know, whatever. Um, 
Well, you might not even be hooked up to anything. Anyway, so, um, you know, the next one, obviously, is releasing your trailer parking brake, uh, if it's applicable. And then when you put your vehicle in a, in a low gear, and usually, I don't know anybody who doesn't start out in, you know, first gear if you're doing this tech. I, I don't know why they they would specify that now as far as automatic um uh can't remember ever operating an automatic 18 wheeler uh so you know it's just always starting out in the your first so anyway um like i guess if you if you do have an automatic I reckon, I don't know, they might, mm, and I'm trying to think, I know I've operated pump trucks that are automatic, that have a low gear, so maybe they do for 18 wheelers also, I've just never been able to operate one of those back when I was driving. Oh my goodness. Um, let me get back on my track here. Okay, so gently pull forward against your parking brake to make sure that the parking brake holds. Okay, repeat the same steps for the trailer with trailer parking brake set and the power unit parking brakes released, if applicable. So if it doesn't hold the vehicle, it is faulty, get it fixed. Okay, test service brake stopping action. Go about five miles per hour, push the brake pedal firmly. Pulling to one side or the other can mean brake trouble. And that's pretty self-explanatory. Any unusual brake pedal feel or delayed stopping action can mean trouble. And you know, it's like, you know, if you get really spongy, you know, so, especially if it's a vehicle that, you know, you're used to operating. And you get in one day and, you know, you do your check and you just, you feel like it's, it's, uh, your pedal goes a lot farther than normal, like it did the day before. Or if you're coming back from the weekend, you know, having the weekend off or whatever. You know, it just seems like something's wrong. And so you definitely want to, you want to get, uh, get put on a fast track to get that into the uh, to the shop maybe push your dispatcher to put you in another vehicle till that one can get a service inspection by mechanic okay um, if you find anything unsafe during the vehicle inspection get it fixed uh, federal law and state laws forbid operating an unsafe vehicle uh, this is another thing that you know um, Drivers, drivers can get on the hook uh, or are on the hook for a lot. Um, operating a commercial vehicle is, uh, you know, it really is something that uh, this, this statement right here uh, should get your attention you know, federal and state laws forbid operating an unsafe vehicle. So just know your vehicles. You know, make sure that, you know, it, even if it pops up and you're halfway through your trip, you know, a professional driver still has to understand that, yeah, they can push it, they can take a chance to get back to the shop or take the chance to make it uh, to their load destination, their drop-off point. You know, a lot of people, a lot of drivers over the years have, have done, uh, you know, the same kind of things. But at the end of the day, if it is something that is unsafe, that could cause 
um, y- you know, not just company, you know, financial uh, loss and financial obligations for remuneration by your company, uh, you know, tearing up your vehicle, running on, into an off ramp, um, things that does not harm anybody else, it still can come back and bite the driver. Um, so just always make sure that, you know, when, you, when we're operating, we do it. You know, make sure our vehicle is safe. All right, moving on to subsection 2.1.6, inspection during a trip. So checking your vehicle operation regularly. Okay, you should keep a check on your instruments. So your air pressure gauge, if you have air brakes, um, your temperature gauges, your pressure gauges, your ammeter, your voltmeter, your mirrors, your tires, your cargo, or cargo covers, your lights, etc. If you see, hear, smell, or feel anything that might mean trouble, check it out. Okay, your safety inspection. Drivers of trucks and truck tractors when transporting cargo must inspect the securement of the cargo within the first 50 miles of a trip and every 150 miles or every three hours, whichever comes after. Subsection 2.1.7, after trip inspection and report. You may have to make a written report each day on the condition of the vehicles you drove. Report anything affecting safety or possibly leading to mechanical breakdown. Okay, subsection 2.1, test your knowledge. The vehicle inspection report tells the motor carrier about problems that may need fixing. Keep a copy of your report in the vehicle for one day. That way the next driver can learn about any problems you have found. Okay, question one. What is the most important reason for doing a vehicle inspection? Question two. What things should you check during a trip? Question three, name some key steering system parts. Question four, name some suspension system defects. Question five, what three kinds of emergency equipment must you have? Question six, what is the minimum tread depth for front tires for other tires? Question seven, Name some things you should check on the front of your vehicle during the walk around inspection. Question eight, what should wheel bearing seals be checked for? Question nine, how many red reflective triangles should you carry? Question 10, how do you test hydraulic brakes for leaks? Question 11, Why put the starter switch key in your pocket during the vehicle inspection? These questions may be on your test. If you can't answer them all, reread subsection 2.1.